Hey, hello, uh, welcome and thanks for watching this video. Uh, this is not something that I do often, uh, especially a, a video in English. Normally most of my videos on the channel are in Dutch, but for this one I am gonna make a exception. Is that is that actually how I, I how I would say it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't I don't care. But this is a development update about a prototype. Uh, for the last four to six weeks, I've been working on a uh, small prototype just to stay active a little bit. Like I've been working on a main game for 10 years now. And uh, sometimes you just need to do something different or uh, I try to pick something else up just to learn something new or um, yeah, just to do something different, just to spice things up, to spice it up. Uh, one of the things uh, with the main project that I've been working on, uh, I've been using Construct 2 and for this prototype I actually delved into Construct 3. Um, have been postponing that for a very long time, mostly not a huge fan of the subscription services, but I, I don't want to get into details of that. And uh, to be honest, like the, the pricing is very good. But uh, uh, I had to learn Construct 3, but I also wanted to learn Construct 3. And um, I, will, I, will, I will show the game in just a minute, but, but I might have to give like a small explanation about what the heck is going on. Um, I have attempted to make a similar game maybe a couple of years ago. Uh, it has been a couple of years ago. There are actually two videos on this channel. It's like how to build a Zelda game. And guess what? <laughs> I'm trying to build a Zelda game again. Um, but this time, this time for real, <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm not sure like where, um, how's it going to end up. Um, when I'm talking about a Zelda game, you know, Construct, uh, three and two there, it's a 2d engine. Of course you can make some 3d, uh, looking or type of games, but I, I just focus on the 2d games because I love the original Zelda game. And for me, the challenge, maybe it's a more, more or less a challenge for me. I just want to figure out like how or what does it entail to make something that is similar, but different enough. But how, how would those systems work? You know, like moving from one screen to another, loading in enemies, items, the shops, the dungeons, the bosses, and you know, what does it mean? And what do I actually have to build to, yeah, you know, make a prototype like that? And we will see where it's heading towards to, you know, I don't know where it's going to end up. I do have some things in my mind, like, okay, I, I kind of want to do this, kind of want to do that. But, uh, you know, sometimes you start a prototype and that's why you prototype, you actually end the prototyping because either you don't have any time, uh, it gets bored. It gets boring, <laughs> or it gets too complex. Or actually, you do have to do some other work for real seas. Uh, but with that said, let uh, let you start, and uh, I will show uh, what I've been working on. Um, don't want to go into details like ah, uh, you know, this system works like this, and this works like that. I kind of want to keep this within like the uh, thirty minutes. Um, but yeah, let's just see, let's just see. So top down sell the game. It is a prototype. Uh, I do want to, uh, you know, if people enjoy this video, let me know because then, you know, I will make more videos and maybe, uh, you know, once a month or just when there's like a big enough update to actually go, you know, talk for like 30 minutes about it. If there are any questions about, hey, could you go a little bit more into detail on how you actually make that? Let me know so I can make a specific video about that or answer that in the next video. Because going, this is not a tutorial, but maybe you might be, uh, while watching it, you, you might be able to learn something. Wow. Or you might actually say like, dude, why, why did you build it like that? I don't know. I don't know. It works. And if it works, it's okay. <laughs> I don't know. That's how it works. 
uh, with that said, let's just start and see where it goes. Uh, I actually might set a timer. 30 minutes. There we go. So this is Construct2. I'm not going to go over Construct2. Um, there are loads and a lot uh, more videos about Construct2. Um, so if you want to see that or want to know more about Construct2, you just have to watch those videos. This is not about the beginning and uh, what you have to do and how you build something in Construct2. So here it is. I'm just going to go over it. Um, this is the screen that I've been looking for uh, or looking at for <laughs> the last four or six weeks. Uh, I do have some other screens though. But what we see here are the... Uh, yeah, okay. I, I think you see the, the mouse pointer. But these are items uh, that you can pick up. Um, this is just a screen. Uh, just like the original Zelda, I do have like an enemy walking around here. So I have some sort of pathfinding. It's not too complicated. It just looks like uh, the the enemy just looks at, okay, can I move over there? Yes or no. And uh, uh, it makes a decision if it uh, is going to move up, down, left or right. Um, I just wanted to have an enemy over there. Uh, I do have this square block here, the gray one. Uh, there's just a lot of uh, blocks in here. It's a prototype. This is something that I've been working on yesterday evening. It's going to be a switch, something that I can turn on and turn off and something happens. And that's uh, also connected to a, a different system. We do see a staircase here. Uh, I will enter that one in a second, but... Uh, how to enter that one is actually a, a little bit odd, <laughs> but I will explain and it will uh, become clear. But once you go into the staircase, we load in a different world. So right now, uh, this world is loaded in and I made a um, way too convoluted or too complex system about how the world is loaded in. <laughs> you know, in due time, I will tell. Before I actually go into the staircase, let's just move down here. We see the camera actually moving to the next screen. We do have like two enemies and I do see the switch over there um, because I'm not deleting the switches once I move over to a screen. I can move here to the right. That switch is going to stay there. Uh, it's a bug. Let's fix that later. Uh, and then I do have another screen over here. Uh, the funny thing though is with this, uh, I am just using a layout, one single layout, no other layout. So that's actually the uh, the layout uh, where everything is happening is uh, this thing over here that you see on the back. And I will show that on full screen uh, yeah, probably in a few uh, minutes. Um, but this is just the layout. So the question might be like, okay, how are you actually moving around? I'm loading in the next screen and actually faking it. Uh, a new screen is moving in the layout instead of the player actually moving to a position. So once I move down, the player actually moves up. So it's uh, trickery. That's video games. It's it's magic. <laughs> Um, I do see another bug though that a lot of enemies are uh, not despawning, but it's fine. It's a prototype. Listen, get 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 away. There, I do have a sword. I can attack. Um, what I also have is a inventory system. Uh, my focus is just to have a primary and a secondary slot. Uh, that is what you see here on the right. I do have a sword equipped, uh, but I could equip a bow um, you can't equip arrows this is a potion uh, I, I think that's a health potion a uh, lovely art but let's just equip the sword I don't No, the bow is not even working uh, my intent with this was just to make a inventory system and that I was able to select and deselect things and also based on the item uh, check if you can equip or uh, equip that item, yes or no, if it's something that is equipable. Uh, a nice thing is also, uh, if I have the bow here, equip it to the different one, it actually moves there, and it removes the bow from the uh, the primary slot. 
you know, there's some functionality, but something that I definitely have to wor continue working on. Now, this is a staircase. I already explained that. Um, it's not working right now because I was working on triggers, something like event triggers. Like if this happens, then you can do this. That is why I was building a switch. If I turn on the switch, uh, something happens because the switch is connected to something. And I was really thinking about uh, how do I actually do that? How do I connect certain things to that thing? Because I don't have other layouts. I don't have a separate event sheet for this layout. Uh, everything has to happen over here. So what I did though, um, and I, I have to be quick because this, uh, I was working on tr triggers like, okay, um, even a trigger, like if you pick up this item, something could happen. And uh, the, the item actually checks if it's a trigger and a trigger is connected to something else. And that thing could either be unlocked or um, uh, be unhidden or uh, get visible. Um, is it visible? Yes or no? So I'm going to pick this up, but I have to run though. So now we're downstairs. You know, at some point we will make a fancy screen transition and maybe that you walk down the stairs and actually get there. But now we loaded in a new world and a new screen. And in this world, um, this was just there to uh, make the make like a shop, but this could either also be a dungeon. Uh, but in this case, it's just a new world. And in this world, there's just one screen. And the switch is still there. It's a bug. It's deal with it. Uh, but there's a different item over here. Not sure what it is. Uh, we did pick up a candle. Um, that was the prior item, and I think the other item that uh, that was on the right were some arrows. Let's just pick this up. I, I, I'm not sure what item that is. It's just an item. But then we move out. Uh, the item that we picked up actually disappeared. Disappeared. So we have a check if it's collected, yes or no. And again, this is the same layout. I am not moving to a different layout. This is the same layout, but I'm loading in all the data uh, with JSON files and uh, the likes. But now I can't enter anymore. So this is a weird thing. I will explain that um, as well. So what happened is the item is connected to a trigger, but what I made is that a trigger also could have a timer. So when I pick up that uh, item up, uh, it will trigger the staircase that it is unlocked, but also a timer is running in the background that will, uh, once that is triggered, it will uh, lock uh, the staircase again. So you need to be quick. Is that something that's going to end up in the game? I don't know, but I'm able to do it. <laughs> and that's important. So I might be able to think like, okay, maybe there are some events like if you pick that up or you move that thing, there's a timer and that keeps running in the background. Um, so there's a different item. And I do think like if I move away and then up again, uh, yeah, okay. So the item is gone. Sometimes the enemies, they, they, the enemy position is also safe when I move down and then up again. In this instance, uh, the th this enemy is freaking out right now. Not sure why. Sometimes I fix it and I think, okay, now it's uh, fixed. Uh, I also notice that it's sort of offset. But what is happening is that I do save the position of that enemy. And once I move down and then up again, it should appear uh, yeah, in near the same area. Um, that data is lost again if I move two screens away. So it's more if you go back and down, back and down, back and down, back and down. No, back, back and up, back and up. No, down and up, down and up. <laughs> Listen, it's early in the morning. I don't know why they are freaking out. I don't know why. But let's just uh, go over uh, um, the, the game uh, a little bit more. I hope it's clear to see, but again, this is the layout. Uh, don't pay attention to this. Uh, the red bars are just for moving out of the screen. Like if I uh, touch uh, one of those, it will actually check, okay, you're on the screen and there's a screen up there. Let's load that in and I move down. 
I do have a timer here. That's just uh, a sprite with a uh, timer behavior on it. Uh, I, I often do that. If I have timers, I, I will make a sprite, just a, uh, a clock that I often use for uh, those type of things. Um, what I do have though, here is the event sheet. And I will, I will try to zoom in a little bit. Uh, can I actually do that? I should be able to do that, but it's not let, letting me zoom in right now. Uh, I hope it's clear. And otherwise, again, if, if you want to know something more about, or if you do have some questions like, okay, could you go into detail about that? Then sure, let me know in the comments. So the game, uh, as you can see, I do have a lot of uh, event sheets uh, just for the controls, things that happen for the player, the camera, but I don't think a lot is happening with the camera. One of the earlier builds actually has had a huge layout with all the different screens, but I wanted to make it more complex at all and also simplify it. What? Um, we do have like a game manager, some game specific stuff is happening over there, uh, like an interaction manager, an enemy manager, an entrance manager, object manager, and a trigger manager. I like managers. Um, you know, I, I just have the tendency to make a not a ton of managers, but just like, okay, these are some main things that actually have to deal with multiple things at once and... Uh, it's just more the like the general stuff that's happening over there and if there's something like highly specific then that's in a different event sheet um but but yeah uh, i do have a lot of managers and i will maybe uh get clear uh uh, uh why this is happening uh again i'm not gonna go over uh every little bit in this video uh maybe the main bits uh but definitely not gonna go into detail so um, this is the main event sheet on the start of layout. Uh, I'm gonna call a method or a function game initialize. And this one is where a lot of stuff is happening. That's quite important. Uh, this is directly speaking to the data manager and I'm loading in a ton of JSON files uh, because um, I'm used to work with XML files and with Construct3, uh, that was actually the first time that I started working on JSON files. I might have done that in Gudo uh, at, at some point, but I do have a lot of JSON files. And those files uh, contain data. And let's, let's just pick, uh, let's just open one up. Uh, here I'm loading in the item data and what does the item data actually say? Uh, it has the data for all the items. So let's just look at the, um, now the text is very small. Uh, I do hope, is there a way to zoom in a little bit? I thought it was just control and zoom in uh, the mouse wheel. Hmm. I don't know. I hope this is clear and otherwise again, uh, different video. So this is, uh, you know, there are a ton of items that I have in mind, but I just have like a few ones that are important for this prototype and to actually test out some things. So I do have like consumables, things that are required to actually use an item like the arrows. And uh, I have a lantern, uh, you know, maybe at some point you can use the lantern on some of those bushes and burn them away and find an entrance. I don't know. Uh, I do have a sword and, uh, you know, short range and then the long range. Um, and again, I'm not going to make like 20 items at, from the get-go because I really am trying to figure out, okay, what does an item need for data? Normally, this is not what I did in JSON files, but JSON files are very useful. Like, holy moly. I don't know why you didn't know uh, about JSON files that much. Maybe I need to do some more research. But let's just go over uh, what uh, I actually have written down or what I uh, saved up in this JSON file. Like the type of item, is it consumable, the range, the damage of an item. Uh, so 
Of course, a health potion is gonna not going to cause damage, so maybe I have to remove that. But I was thinking about, okay, I just want to, if I make a new item, just copy and paste the text. If it doesn't do any damage, it's zero. It will call a function uh, that is used consumable. If, if it is equipable, yes or no. So the health potion is equipable, but the arrows are not, because you don't have to equip the arrows. Um, the rec item is more, is there a item that you also require to use this one? Uh, also the amount of items that you need to use it if it is stackable. So can I have more health potions in one slot? Yes. Uh, and the stack size is five. And then the item also has a icon and I load in the sprite with the text. So that is how that inventory is built. Uh, this one has that item, so load in that sprite. So let's take a look at a um, different item. That's the uh, arrows, and that's a um, a rex. That's a requirement or a something that you need to use. Or no, something. It's it's like ammo. Like this item is used. This item is required to use a different item, if that makes sense. Uh, I might change up the types, but this is what I came up with. Uh, the function use consumable, you're not going to use that. So I might be, uh, I should actually remove this text, this, this function here. If it's equipable, no, it doesn't require anything. It is stackable and it's 20 and it is an icon. But let's just skip ahead a little bit about the bow. So the bow has a range. The sword has a range as well. But let's stick to the bow. Uh, it has damage. Uh, it will call function if it's equipable. Yes. But here we do see the rec item. And then I write down the item idea, which is uh, just the text over here. And then one. So if we use the bow, we need one arrow. And then uh, we actually are able to use that. So this is one of those files that I load in the beginning, but let's take a look at uh, what might be a little bit more interesting about the worlds, because I said like, okay, if you move down the staircase, a new world is loaded in. Uh, so how does that work? On the right, you do see some uh, files here as well. So we do have the level zero world file, and we do have an uh, S world file. Uh, it's just slightly hidden behind the, the camera can i actually move that up a little bit uh yeah you, you just trust me there's another file that's called s world data but let's just focus on this one in this one there's not much happening because it's a small prototype i'm just trying to build all the systems first before i actually uh, make it and uh, iterate further upon the uh you know the, the game and actually try to work out if everything is uh, connected well enough, if that makes sense. So we do have like a basic player spawn, um, like where, uh, I, I don't think this is even really connected, but this is there to load in the player from the beginning. Like, okay, uh, the, the player needs to spawn in from X and Y from the X3 and Y7. But now you, you might ask like, okay, how does it actually work? Let's just load this up again. Uh, I do have a, like a debug. So let's just move here. We do, uh, I think we, did we spawn here? I think we spawned here. That's three and then seven. So I made a small overlay. Like, okay, if I want to adjust that and want to, uh, maybe have a feeling like, okay, the player should actually spawn here. I just uh, know that it should be at 6.11. And the, the player direction. So what sh uh, direction should the player look at uh, with that uh, that thing? So that that's just simple data over here. Um, it's probably going to change later. Based on save files and maybe uh, where you can actually save. Do you save at a bonfire? Who knows? It's a Zelda game. Zelda doesn't have bonfires. Or does it? Um, 
you know, at the uh, the entrance, that's the staircase. But uh, you know, the entrance here, you do see some numbers over here, and this is so. This is the the data file for the first world, L0, and each world has different screens, and you just have to look at it from uh, yeah how do, how do you actually look at it um, I should have drawn this out but this is the first screen so this is the screen on the upper left basically in, in your mind this is on the upper left so the next screen to the right over here should be screen number one so I go from left to right and if the max width of this world is uh, four screens so we have zero one two three so the next row would be screen number four so if i move down i load in screen number four and then again if you want a deeper explanation about that just let me know uh, but this is screen zero uh, that's zero over here so at the start of that layout i check okay which screen is this and do I need to load in an entrance? Yes or no? So I check, is there a zero over there? And there is. So the next zero is the ID of that specific entrance. So I only have one, that's entrance zero. If I had two, then the other one, I would make another one over here with a one and a different location, of course. It has a type, a staircase. Uh, there might be some other types like doors or uh, holes in the ground or a, a well, maybe, could be. I, uh, I, I honestly don't know. Um, would a well act differently? Uh, maybe, maybe, you know, the, the well, like you jump in the well. Don't, ju don't, don't jump in the well. So the type is just staircase, but that uh, in the end, uh, it's not going to matter much. It's mostly the what type of sprites or the animation that has to be loaded in. Like how does it actually lo look like the sprite itself? Then we do have some uh, booleans. Is it hidden? It's false because we can see it from the start. And do we have do we do have some hidden triggers and. Um, I talked a little bit about the triggers. That's something that I've been working on right now. Maybe this might be overhauled uh, or get, get changed um, later on, but I have a feeling this is working so far. <laughs> it is working. So a door, you know, it's an entrance. An entrance can either be locked or not. Like, can you enter it? Yes or no. You might need a key for a, a door or to get in but this one is locked so it's uh, that is why if we move on it we can actually go down because we have to pick up that item why uh, testing things out so the hidden triggers doesn't have any triggers there's there's no trigger to hide uh the staircase or not uh, but this one the is locked has a trigger though the unlock trigger is item, the world, the screen, and the ID. So let's quickly move over to um, this file. And yeah, I I, I might make, uh, I, chances are high I'm making this way more complicated than it should be. <laughs> but listen. Uh, it's testing out and I kind of like the convoluted way the because I, I, I also don't think like how, how I how I could simplify this um, yes make layouts for each screen but that's also kind of nuts so there are a lot of pros and cons for working like this but I also have never done it so I'm, I'm kind of doing this to test out the, the limitations of JSON files and if this is actually working so, so if you look at uh, if you're looking at this and you're like oh dude no don't do this let me know uh i will probably don't change uh, won't change it but uh you know <laughs> you know but i do have an object data and the object data is simply okay for this world because this is the uh level zero um object data json file 
Again, we do have items, screen zero, item zero. So uh, that is why we have two items on the first screen. Uh, if I want more items or wanna place items at different locations, I just add a new uh, key, you know. So here we say the type is an item, the ID, the type is important um, because at the start of the layout, I call a function like, hey, check for each item, check all the objects that need to be loaded in. And that's happening in a manager. Just the amount of items, it's just one. If it's collected, yes or no. So if it is collected, um, it won't uh, spawn again. You know, uh, it's just a one-time pickup. But I could probably say, hey, spawn that item in again, if you can pick it up often, or if you maybe lose an item. But that's something for later. If it's hitting, yes or no. Uh, this is something that needs a trigger event as well but uh, I'm not that far yet. Uh, the, the location where it's gonna spawn and maybe if you need an item or something to pick it up, uh, this is something, this is a leftover uh, thing from before. There's another item and then the switch that we saw uh, get spawned on the, um, on the layout. So it's a normal switch, is it hidden, yes or no? So we see the usual stuff over here also, is it locked, yes or no, if you need an item? So let's, I know I'm moving from one thing to another, uh, but I'm trying to go over the, the actual logical steps of, okay, uh, to to make this work, I, you, have, you need this, and uh, for that you need this. So let's go over the other important file uh, that makes, some things maybe a little bit more clear about the triggers because I've been working on this for the last two weeks here and there, not full time. Uh, but I do have one file for trigger data. Trigger data is just for everything. Uh, is that correct though? Uh, I, I, I think it is. Yes, it is correct. I do have one file for the trigger data and that's gonna be for everything at this point. Uh, I might have to get changed later on if the world is actually, or if I have like ton of different worlds, but yeah. This thing has uh, a trigger in it and that is based on, you know, the category, it's an item. And then we do have the ID, so this is an item. Uh, the ID is based on the location, the screen, and the item number. So once we pick up that item, we actually check if that uh, if there is a key in this JSON file, and if there is, we're gonna set it triggered uh, to true. And uh, you can actually ignore this. And uh, because the triggers are gonna be very simple, um, it's just, is it triggered, yes or no? And if there's a timer, nothing else is happening. Uh, I don't even think this is happening. Like I'm not calling a function. Um, yes. Yes, That that is how it works. So, Scuffa, let's go over the logical steps. You talked about picking up an item, then you trigger an event, and the entrance gets unlocked. How does that actually happen? And how is that connected? Well, I was talking about the whole game is one layout. So let's go over this event sheet. I do have like a lot of uh, CSV files and JSON files, but mostly JSON files and some XML files for the enemy data, like which enemy should spawn and uh, let's just go to the game manager because I do have a timer, uh, half a second. Um, not sure why, but just to trigger this event. And hey, see what is nice about the game manager? It's a timer for the game to start. That is probably in the game manager. I, I just like separating everything because I, it's easier to find stuff. What is happening uh, for the game manager? and? Yes, I will get to the trigger. Just 
couple seconds. I have here a function called initiate screen because I have to load in things for the screen. Uh, I need to create a player that's based on the X and Y uh, values in that uh, JSON file. Uh, I also have to set the, uh, the controller, the set controls. I don't think I'm going to go over the controls uh, in this video. Uh, that, that was actually 30 minutes, but let's go, let's just say like another 15 minutes because this is the first one. So uh, load next screen, that's maybe not important right now. The initiate screen is the most important one. Uh, I'm grading uh, collisions based on the tiles, just so that you can move outside. Because again, this is just a layout, so everything has to be loaded in. So I'm basing the uh, collision. Uh, okay, um, some tiles have a, a value, and if it's that value, I create a collision in a a different uh, uh, tile sheet, tile map that has collision. I um, I enable some borders, uh, and he, this is maybe the important one. Uh, I'm calling a function create entrance, a load enemy, and load object item. The entrance, well, you might guess that is in the entrance manager. So what is actually happening if uh, we create an entrance? I was talking about this before. Um, it is going to look and in the JSON file. Let's just open up the JSON file. Uh, no, I, I, no, that's not, that's not the one you want to open up. Dual data. Let's just move that. Let's just open that up over there. Yeah, very nice. So we, we can actually look at what is happening entrance manager so here we have loaded in this json file because that's just level zero but this is also happening when you go into the entrance go to your new layout it, it's gonna load this in what is happening json will uh json world it's gonna check if there's a key entrance there is but it also checks the current screen so if it's zero, it's going to check here and then it's going to create every uh, entrance there. So, uh, you know, the, the location, the type, the position, uh, the position is, of course, a little bit different because um, every X and Y value gets multiplied by 16 because it's a 16 by 16 pixel grid. And I do have a function that uh, takes care of that. Um, because maybe at some point um, that, that gets changed. And so it's kind of nice to have like a function to take care of that. Uh, yes, might make sense for some people. We're going to create an uh, entrance on the uh, on a uh, layout, set the ID, the animation. That's based on the type. You know, it's a staircase. And then also uh, we do have a check here, the set entrance trigger. Uh, now, this is something that I've been working on for the last couple uh, weeks to figure out like how does it actually work because I was talking about the triggers. Um, it's going to check if it's made uh, while it has or once it has been created, it's going to check for triggers. Has the trigger been triggered? Yes or no? Now, let's just open up the JSON file as well. So it's gonna check that. So the uh, unlock trigger here to make it locked is the item over there. So set trigger, uh, we're gonna just check the entrance. We know uh, that the that, that entrance is connected to this trigger. So what is happening here? We're calling a function. Hey, has this trigger been triggered? Yes or no? If it has been triggered, unlock it. If it hasn't been triggered, uh, yeah, unlock it or lock it or change the, the value. Now, the, the thing is, though, what sort of makes it complicated, um, it is actually checking for multiple triggers. So this is an array with triggers. So I could make it so that I have to pick up both items to make it locked or unlock that entrance. 
So it's going to check uh, the array and for each trigger if it's there. So it's going to check here. Oh, this trigger, that idea, is it triggered true or false? And then do that thing. Um, so that's the uh, that that was that was kind of make it more complicated. But so once it created a entrance, it's gonna check the triggers, um, and then actually apply what has been triggered. Why are you building it like this? I don't know. How how else would I buy? Uh, why why? Uh, what did I say? Why why would I build it like this? I I, I think I said buy. Why would I build it like this? Uh, because it's working. Um, and in my mind, I'm thinking about, uh, you know, the it, it's not logical, like pick up an item and the entrance opens. But to me, what makes it more logical at some point, I want to have those moving blocks, you know, them and sell that you push them away and then, uh, you know, you push one away and then an entrance gets unlocked or is actually shown. That is happening over here. Um, if there's a block, I could check once that block is moved, if that actually triggers something and then the entrance. But right now I have an item, but it's kind of nice to know that an item is even able based on triggers, uh, or is able to get connected to a trigger and then, uh, you know, make something appear. And I know it's... I know it's super complex. Uh, <laughs> it's super complex. It's a prototype. I'm I'm kind of trying to find out like the boundary of Construct Three and also working with James and Fels, but also okay, what can I do with this? Uh, and I'm having fun. I'm having fun. That's uh, the most important bit. Um, to me, in my mind, the, uh, you know by by doing this and maybe it's not gonna work uh maybe this is not gonna work out at all the the tricky events um and of course there are some limitations but by having items make um if i'm able to show or hide an item if i'm able to by picking up an item show or enable a door or something else a different kind of object that means a quest line could be possible. Uh, maybe that could be tied to a dialogue tree or, um, you know, some sort of progress within the game. As long as I'm able to trigger that, that thing in the trigger data, like this has been triggered, then that opens up um, some more some more possibilities and of course you need to be careful with uh, feature creep but i'm prototyping i'm just discovering like what do i actually want in this game and in my mind i have a game i i i do have a concept for a game and uh, this is just a way to make sure that if i have an idea it might be possible or not or to find out uh, you know, you kind of have that idea, but you need to scale down a little bit. And then again, 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 I'm having fun. So that's the triggers. Uh, again, if you do have some questions about that, like, could you go over specifically for the uh, the triggers for five and then a five hour video? <laughs> Let me know. Uh, and I'm working on it right now. So I'm still discovering some things. Um, let's just go back to the game. Uh, you know, the, how the entrances and objects are loaded in, it's basically all the same. Uh, so the load object item, uh, this might, uh, this actually will get renamed because it's no longer for the items. It's just like, okay, in the object data that fell, we do have that over here. And let's go back to the game um, object manager. It's just gonna check, hey, uh, are there any items for this screen? Yes, load those in, uh, you know, and then we call a function for that. Um, 
this is going to change. Uh, I don't want to send those values along. Don't pay attention to that. that. That's just too much. And as you can see with the switch, I already adjusted it that I only have to send the JSON path to that thing and then load in the, uh, the, the data over there. What? Um, so this is just the load object item is just going to be the thing. Okay. Load in all these objects and, uh, what has been low or what needs to be loaded in is going to be in this, uh, object data for this world. If that makes no, that, that is making sense. I'm just going to say that makes sense. Uh, so how does it actually look like? Uh, we do have a check if it's collected, yes or no, or else actually make it the collected thing. I could, I, I think I could, could actually place it over here, but hmm. Yeah, maybe I will look at it after this video. Yes. Uh, we do have something like, okay, if we collect an item, we set it to collect it. Uh, some stuff is happening. Destroy item is just destroy something once you pick it up. But also, uh, once we move away from the screen, uh, you know, erase all the, uh, uh, the items, because again, we're not moving to a different layout. We're not moving to a different, uh, section in the layout. The layout is just a single screen and that is my constraint. Uh, I'm not going to make bigger screens. It's just going to be that screen. Um, and then the switch, uh, you know, as you can see, uh, the switch is way simpler. And I was working on this like last night, uh, and the things that I applied over here, like how I load in the data is, uh, what I'm also going to do for the object data. So that's something that, uh, you know, it's on the to-do list. The enemy manager, um, is kind of similar. Like, uh, it, 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 there's a simple Boolean. If I'm backtracking, you should know. And then, uh, if I'm backtracking, it's loading data in from a temporary save file, um, where I store some, uh, data, uh, but mostly it's from the XML file. And let's open up, uh, how that actually looks like. This is something that I worked on way, way, way in the beginning. Um, pub is probably going to change, but not that much. This is just rather simple. We do see the same structure. Like once we go on uh, a new world on the screen, it's just going to load in the different type of enemies based on uh, the type and then the, the position. And that's for each screen over here. I like this way in. I'm using an XML file because why am I using an XML? Uh, because an enemy doesn't need an ID. Um, so I don't have a separate key. And with this, I can just make a whole list of enemies for a single screen. Uh, it's just going to go over for each entry or each key in a JSON file. What is more uh, important to know, um, the inventory, the inventory is something that I, it's a, it's a basic one. Uh, let's just briefly look at the inventory because the, um, the inventory, the inventory is rather simple. Um, and it's just there to be able to select items and to test things out. Uh, you need that and you know, you need that functionality, but what I'm undecided about, um, is with an inventory, uh, this one, am I going to use the similar one as the first Zelda, you know, uh, this item goes over there, this item goes over there. You can move them around. It's just like every uh, item has a specific slot and it goes over there. The bow goes over there and that's it. That is how I have sort of set it up. Like the sword goes over there. You can move items around. Uh, I don't want to make this too complicated, but, um, maybe 
maybe I want to make a mix between Zelda and... What other game is there? We do have Zelda and... Let's just... I, I, I do have some names in mind, but... Do I want to be able to move items around? Do I want to be able or make it so that uh, your inventory could get expanded, like uh, make it bigger? And also, are you just able to sell your sword? Will items just be placed in the inventory and you have to figure out like if you have space, yes or no? Like so that there's a more... Uh, um, there's more inventory management involved. So that, that is actually what is happening uh, with the inventory. I, I don't know if I want to make it. No, this item just goes over there and you can sell it or make it so, oh, you want to pick up those arrows, but your inventory is full. You need to sell an item. Also, do you equip magical items, armor, whatever? That's something that I've not decided about. That's for later. The basic setup is right now, I do have an inventory, can select items, and that's it. What else is uh, maybe good to know? Uh, the stats, I, a player will get stats, um, but I'm not sure like how that's gonna, how that is gonna work. Um, the camera, the controls, the controls are not that interesting to look at. Uh, the game manager, uh, the interaction manager, that, that's actually empty right now. That's uh, what I'm working on right now. I have a main menu, which is just uh, a single layout. Oh, so I lied. There are two layouts. The menu and the game. Uh, the object manager, uh, yeah, that's, that, that is basically it. Maybe, maybe there's um, something that's interesting for the... Uh, we did look at the item data. Oh, I, I do have to do that from here. We did take a look at this. The inventory right now is just set up like this. Uh, you know, the item ID and the, and the quantity. Um, there's just nine slots right now, but there should be more, but I don't need more. I don't know if I want to... I'm not working on this right now because of the previous thing that I was talking about that I have not made a decision uh, what type of inventory that I actually want. The UI data um, is just basically where does where does something uh, show up. Uh, maybe that's a, a thing that I want to make a decision on. Uh, maybe you can help me out with that decision. Uh, a thing that I forgot about oh I, I do want to show uh one final thing uh how the levels are actually built and how that is loaded or not specifically how that is loaded in but how i save each screen but because that way is kind of funky and it's gonna be a lot of work but also maybe fun uh to do i'm not sure yet we will see oh actually um uh, I need to remind myself because I wanted to. What I want to find out today, oh, I'm all over the place. What I want to find out today is because you're using a tell map, uh, I do think I've looked at this before in uh, Construct 2, but I'm kind of curious if I can load in an image for a tell map because I don't want to make multiple tell maps and I just want to say, okay, in this world, load in this image for the tells. Is it possible? Yes or no? Maybe. And if it's not possible, it's not a big issue, uh, but it would be very nice because that would make things even easier. And it would also enable us to do some more interesting things. But what I was talking about, what was I actually talking about? Oh, yes, 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 a uh, final thing. And then uh, this video is done, just an hour. I've not decided about the UI yet, uh, because the UI in the first Zelda is kind of interesting, because it, I think it covers maybe uh, two or maybe three rows or two and a half rows. Like, 
this everything that is above this like here that is actually black do i want a similar ui just a black bar at the top it could be cool uh because i it could be cool because it's kind of old school it could also complicate some things but also uh you know it's just a single screen so there's not a lot of you know room or that that, that would actually mean we are losing out on these three rows but i might be okay with it if i do that though some of the things need to be changed but not not a ton uh but I, I have to make a decision about that soon. Because what I don't want is... I, I just like the grid. And I don't want a sword icon over here. You need to see what you have equipped. And that it overlaps with the uh, actual level layout. Because then designing the, the screens would become a bit more complicated. Because with everything... Like if I place a tree over here. It's like, oh no. The sword is also going to always going to overlap on that so you can't actually do that you know by talking about it i i know i need to add that screen uh, or at the uh, top ui i need to do that i need to do that yes so that's something that i have to do but probably not today uh, but soon though i uh, i do have to do that once i start building and making more uh, screens and the uh, the small thing that I do have to change though is that a level would end up here, so the the check when I move to a different screen would actually or occur here. So I, basically, the player would walk into the UI, and uh, when I and now the game is crashed because there's no screen over there. <laughs> uh, that's actually good. That's a good segue because. Maybe the question is, how do you load levels in? Uh, again, uh, I am not sure about this, but I did it like that. So once we, once we moved down there, it crashed because it was trying to load up a file. And probably that would be screen number eight or nine. So the first screen that is loaded in is a CSV file, a comma separated values. Uh, and this is basically the, the level layout. <laughs> Don't ask me why. Because I am using Telt, that program. And you can export something uh, based on, uh, you know, you can export a CSV file and load it in like this. So for every screen, I do have this. Um, so basically when I uh, move down, it was checking, oh, let's load in eight or nine but i don't have an eight or nine file so i was not able to load that in and that's why it was crashed it's a known bug and a known shippable we can ship the game crash is just don't go don't go to that screen don't go there so that, that's basically what i've been uh, what i've been working on um i don't know if a video like this is fun uh Next time, it might be a little bit shorter just to show, hey, this has been added and this has been changed. Uh, in this video, I kind of have to go over, quickly go over every, not not everything, uh, but the most important bits to make this moving. Um, the, the challenge for me is to make most of the systems and then once those are done and working, that I can expand on it and actually work on the art and the audio and um, more stuff. But I kind of want to keep it so simple. I have an entrance, maybe at a different entrance, but I know if I add an entrance to a different world, I just have to make a world data file and an object file if things are loaded in. So I can kind of expand it. If that is Once that is done, I can expand it. And that that's kind of the challenge and my goal with this game is that I want to have all the systems there and uh, probably not done, but have like a certain certainty that, oh, if I'm going to make it bigger, expand it, uh, it's not probably going to change that much. And at some point that I'm more like, oh, why did you build a trigger like this? Like this is not working at all. 
So I'm just building like the foundation for this game right now. So I've been looking at uh, the same screens for the last six weeks. And it's probably going to remain like that. Although I do have an itch to maybe work on the graphics a little bit. But those are just not important right now. What is important are the systems and the, the more the technical stuff. So yeah, with that said, uh, that's going to do it for this video. It has been an hour. Already way longer. But the next video is going to be shorter. Because that, that is just going to be like, okay, uh, this is how far I am with this prototype right now. <coughs> Apologies. And again, if you do have a question about, hey, could you go a little bit more into detail on how that is made or why you build it like that? Just let me know in the comments and I will make uh, a new video or a separate video or answer that question in just the next video. I will just try to try my best to answer it in a video. And I know with the other video about how to build a Zelda game, uh, not sure how that ended up. I think I made two or three videos or maybe more. If I'm going to end this and I'm like, okay, I'm done with it. I will actually make a video and say, yes, I stopped working on it. Might pick it up again, but also maybe explain why I stopped working on it. So far, I'm having fun and I try, you know, try to work here and there on it like for an hour or so maybe a couple hours or in the evening or in the morning uh, it's just fun uh, yeah again there's a uh, quite a few challenges and that's the purpose of this prototype just how do json files work because normally i was used to work with the xml files um, i think uh, final thoughts or to-do list my to-do list is the Images for the tile map. Can I load an image in? And will that actually work? I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, the other one are the trigger events. Kind of want to expand on that. Um, and I am... Because you can interact with stuff. That, that is what I was working on. And that's why I made an interaction manager. Because I do have a very complex and convoluted way to make the interactions work <laughs> in this game and it involves <laughs> Jason Feld. <laughs> this is Jason Feld the game. Uh I don't know. I'm just having a ton of fun. Uh, I'm gonna work on the on the interactions. Um and maybe next time I'll show like how far I've gone with that. That's gonna do it. Uh thanks for watching I guess. Uh if you like this video just let me know. Um, just let me know, man. <laughs> See you all uh, next time. And really, if you do have a question, let me know in, in the comments. Um, because I love Construct 3. I especially love Construct 2. I've been working on Construct 2 for 10 years. And I know some things don't make sense. <laughs> they make sense to me. They make sense to me. But I will do my best to explain them. And maybe you can learn something from it. And if you do have some tips, <laughs> let me know. If if you are like, don't use Jason Fels for that, do let me know. And maybe I won't do it or try to really find find out what the uh, what the problem is. Uh, yes, what? <laughs> have a nice day, y'all. See you later. Bye.